Buddy Nerdigans. This is the one and only Packer Girl 89 and today's book Nerdigan discussion video is going to be for The Valiant by Leslie Livingston. Leslie is actually one of my followers on Twitter so I am sorry Leslie I didn't get this uh, video done sooner. Um, I've been in the middle of manga midges to get ready for anime, se um, anime seasons this year so I am really sorry but I'm finally doing this video. Anyways before I get to the discussion, I gotta give you a warning. This book did not hold back at all. Oh my god. Oh my god, this, there was a scene in particular where I practically puked. It was that messed up. Anyway, I'm just giving you fair warning. There is crazy crap that happens in this book. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to uh, the discussion. So our main character is Fallon who is the youngest daughter of uh, Virico the King, uh, who's the chief of the Canty tribe of Pridane. And where this book starts off is at her at Fallon's 17th birthday. And this is important because she'll be old enough um, to be made a member of her father's war band, just like her sister was before her. And this is important because we got prophecies here. And we know if you followed me long enough, and have read the books that I have, you know prophecies are important. So her father's chief druid, Olan, had divined that I would, that, you know, I, Fallon, would one day follow in her sister Sorcha's footsteps. But she had been killed on the field of battle. Oh my god. It's so crazy how this prophecy comes true. I, I'm, I can't wait to get to that part. Anyway, so this book got really hot really fast and also the um current book i'm reading the great hunt by wendy higgins the same thing happened i just was like what um so her lover uh, beginning of the book was mal um mael who is the youngest brother of Manu manuitos uh king of tri um trinovantes to the i'm probably butchering this but sorry to the north and his uh young boys he and his brother aiden Oh, I fucking hate him! Oh, I hate Aiden so much! Had been sent to foster with um, with their tribes uh, to grow to manhood as basically one of them, ensuring peace between the two kingdoms. Then we get to that kiss! Oh my god! I love Leslie Livingston's writing when it comes to this stuff. I don't know- uh, I don't know why it's so good, it just really is! But they had, like, a really hot kiss in the beginning. That's what I mean, that this book got hot really fast. And, um... And Mel proposed her! I was like, what? And again, this is going on in the beginning of the book that um, I'm currently reading right now, The Great Hunt by uh, Wendy Higgins. I just think that is so weird. <laughs> anyway, um, so Mel proposed to her, to Fallon, but she turned it down because she wants to make her own name before, um, before she settles down. And... I love what Mal says. All right, I'll wait, Fallon, as long as it takes. But maybe we can make the wait feel shorter. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> it's so sweet. Um, let's see. So here's the deal with the women of the uh, when it comes to love for the women of the tribes of Prydain, Canty, and um, kind of a loony. I'm totally butchering this. I'm sorry. Uh, Katavaluni and Trinovetes and uh, Asini. So they could choose to fight alongside the men or not. And in a way that kind of makes me think of the Amazon warriors just a little, and also uh, the demigods from uh, Rick Riordan series. Uh, let's see. Uh, many did with such skill that they were feared as much as the men. More so even. More so even. The legions yes, this is a Roman book. And uh, the best part about this is I literally finished the Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus series. The Romans are more in the Heroes of Olympus series. And we're gonna get to it in Trials of Apollo really soon. I'm so excited. But yeah, this this is like, whew, this is like Rome uncensored. I, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, the legions thought that the women warriors of the island of, of the mighty were demons. Aberrations uh, whose corpses they burned in heaps after battle so their black souls could never escape to inhabit another body. Jeez. <laughs> of course, I knew how just how ridiculous that was. A primitive superstition. Um, the fighting women of, of uh, the tribes of um, Peridane were as good as they were because they worked at it. I worked at it hard. Found worked at it hard. And where this... You, uh, another idea of where this has taken place. 
Um, it had been almost seven years since the legions left uh, their shores, having declared the island of the mighty sufficiently conquered. In all that time, the Romans had not returned to Prey then, the island they uh, call Britannia. In their uh, strident native tongue, of course, the traitors had never left. They'd been here before Caesar had set foot on our shores. So, yes, Caesar is, Julius Caesar's in this book. He has not been killed yet. And I just find it so fascinating how Caesar's character is, like when we get to meet him. Um, let's see. And uh, they, uh, okay, I gotta re reread this part. They'd been here before Caesar had set foot on our shore and they'd stayed when he departed, tri um, uh, triumphant. Uh, since that um, time, we'd been left in peace. And every, oh yeah. So it's just interesting to get, you know, get an idea of like the timeline where uh, the story has taken place. Um, so this part, oh my God. This part was nuts. So every two years on the eve of uh, Lugnasa, basically the kings of the four tribes came together to feast and toast each other with wide smiles and enough thick foamy beer to strengthen the bonds of friendship forged in the lines of years past. Oh man, nothing brings men together like beer. <laughs> um, oh man, and we get to meet Aiden. Oh my God, Aiden is such a dick. I can't stand him. Um, this would be Aiden's first time there as king. Newly returned from a long period of exile in Rome after his father was killed, um, executed for selling vital information to the Romans. And Mael never spoke of his father's betrayal, but he remained with uh, the Canty since that time. Oh my god. This part shocked the heck out of me. I was just mad. When, uh, when Virico said, or her father said, um, chief among dear friends of Trinovate, my soon-to-be son, uh, come forth, and he said, Aiden. And I was, like, thinking, oh, man, because Mael was having a tar hard time getting in there, and I was, and I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was because of Aiden, and I was, like, thinking to myself, damn it, Mael, if you would have just gone there sooner before Aiden got there, we wouldn't be having this problem. I was really mad. Not only, um, had, um, very code as good as serve, uh, severed the sword from my arm, he cut the heart out of my body, out of it, her, this is from Balance's point of view, and then give it, given it to the uh, brother of the boy I loved. My thought, father had betray, betrayed me not once, but twice. Oh my god, when Mael was killed. Oh my god, it was so mad. Oh man. But before, um, Mael, like, the style of swords, that, sword fighting style that he used with the twin blades, and maybe <laughs> think of Thorfinn from, um, uh, the, uh, Vinland Saga. I had to point that out. And, um, and then what happened was Aiden and, uh, or no, hold on a second. Fallon was chasing Aiden because she wanted to kill him, but Rude Awakening happened. She was kidnapped and sold into slavery in Rome. Um, and we meet Charon. Oh, God. Charon is a really interesting character, especially by the end of this book. Um, and uh, when they're in the uh, car in this uh, uh, wagon, the um, oh uh, the horse that was pulling it stepped in a ditch, and uh, oh man, all hell broke loose. And it killed the dri the driver died, and um, Elka, I love Elka, I love her, and I swear to God, she is from Norse. She's got she's got to be Norse right there because she she said a lot of ja. ja. And, like, where she described, um, where she came from definitely sounds like, uh, she's Norse. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, and Elka was shackled to, um, Fallon. And this was so interesting how they, uh, used their, how they worked together to try and escape. And, uh, oh my god, we found out, and this I, shocked the hell out of me. We found out that, um... Elka's mother sold her into slavery be so that she could have, you know, money to provide for, um, for herself because they were starving. And I'm just like, oh my god, that's just awful. Um, and then they were, uh, oh man. Before they got recaptured, uh, by Charon, like, they fought these natives. Uh, you could call, um, these, uh, Slaves, or, uh, yeah, these slaves that basically escaped, these men that escaped, and they, oh my god, they didn't know how to use a sword. <laughs> and, and, like, they kicked his ass, uh, and especially Elka, and, um, 
it was interesting. It was really cool how they did because they were chained together. And, um, and Charon came back to save their asses, of course, and they were recaptured. And then they were on this ship. And that's where, uh, we, um, after we went to the other, uh, escaped to the other ship, that's where we met Kai. I love Kai. I'm team Kai all the way. I love him. He is, like, first of all, he is handsome as hell. And I like, I like that he's clean shaven and his hair is short. I love it. I want to, like, when I was reading it, I was like, I want to run my fingers through his hair. <laughs> I do! He's so adorable! I love him! I love Kai! Um, and then, as uh, they're getting up, crossing over, Charon um, gives the trunk to Fallon, as she's trying to save his ass, of course, and he's saved. And I love- oh, and then we get to the auction stuff. And I love- the one thing I will give the Romans credit for is this- especially Charon. Charon knows how to put on a freaking show. And we met the collector too. Oh my god, the collector is a creepy mofo. Oh my god, he's so creepy. Um, so uh this was their um this was what Charon said about um about them before they started fighting. If either of these gulls uh can defeat these girls, because that that's who um that's right, that's who um Elka and uh Fallon were fighting in the woods. Um Gauls uh and defeat these girls, daughters of the goddess Minerva herself, I swear. And um and on sale exclusively as a pair today, I will grant them their freedom. I was like thinking to myself, wait a minute. I thought the Romans didn't like Minerva. That's what I got from, uh, maybe, maybe I've been lied to by uh, Heroes of Olympus, but from what I remember, the Romans did not like um, Minerva, and they thought Minerva was kind of nutso, or she was at least in uh, the Mark of Athena. Um, here we go. But it was clear to me that Sharon saw uh, that as my fate, he had all along not a broth brothel, not a salt mine, an arena. And that just shows you, man, Sharon. Sharon, you little smart ass. Oh my god. Um, so who they were sold to uh, was uh, Ludus Achillea, the foremost uh, training academy for female gladiators in all of the Republic, and owned and operated by the Honorable uh, Consul of Rome, Gaius Julius Caesar himself. Yes, he runs this! Um, and I love what Al Al Alka said here. Remember, our life now is simple. Fight, kill, die, and look good doing it. I was like, oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it, Alka. Um, so, what I really liked about the, um, wait, the Ludus, um, Achillia, how they treated the girls, they treated it, the, uh, every girl there as like a sister, uh, that, um, they were part of a sisterhood. And I really appreciated that. Um, these girls are your family. The lady Achillia, the, uh, Lanesta of this place is your goddess and I am your new mother. I, I freaking love this. So basically what they're going to do, um, they're going to learn and not only learn, but master the gladiatorial style of Demacarius, which is um, the double sword wielding warrior who fought with a blade in each hand. I was like, yes, this is like a great way to honor Mael's memory is to do this. And oh my God, she, oh my God, Fallon is so amazing. And um, here's what, what a glad, a glad uh, something interesting about, uh, Gladiatrix. So, a Gladiatrix, if she's good enough, um, she can uh, one day earn enough in the arena to buy her freedom. And, um... This is what Kai said! I freaking love him! He's, he reached into the uh, the basket and pulled out one of the uh, wooden blanks. Um, I hewed to kindling. He tossed it to me and grinned, just be good enough. And I'm just like, I love you, Kai! I love him! And another thing that he did, and he did this on the ship as well, um, was, you know, explain her weaknesses to her. Oh my god, when we saw Sorcha, and we saw that she was alive, I was like, what the hell? How is she alive? Oh my god, it was so shocking. Like, I wish I could have done a live reaction to it. Because that, I was like, I literally said, I was like, what the hell is going on? Um, 
So she said, uh, this is how she, uh, she described it. Fallon described it. Search of the canty stood tall in the war cart, holding the rein and steady in her hand. My sister was alive. She gave Fallon her sword. Oh my God, but she gave Fallon her sword back. I was like, Sharon had something to do with this because he took the sword away. Um, so let's get to, uh, a little bit more about Sorcha and how, you know, um, Fallon ended up there, besides, you know, the obvious uh, auction. Um, I had to open my coffers to spill such an exorbitant amount of money on you, little sister. I was almost there. Um, and she, because she was going to buy the, um, hold on a second, the Ludus Achillea, and she was going to free the girls that were, were slaves. And I, I give her props for that. Um, now will take me years if ever to gather that sum again. And she, cause, she, um, this is still from Sorcha's point of view. I can no longer fight in the games, not with a dim eye and a weak arm. And she, uh, how this happened was she, uh, this is from her point of view. I attempted the Morrigan's, uh, flight, or, yeah, flight during a pageant, which is what, when, um, we started off in the beginning of the book, that's what, um... Fallon was practicing with Ma'el. Shouldn't have mentioned that, but whatever. I fell, of course. It's an impossible feat. The chariot wheel clipped my shoulder and ran over my helmet, leaving me with this. And there was a, a scar on the left side of her face. Oh my god. It, it, that, like, just imagining that really freaked me out. I was just like, god. Uh, here we go. Um, it ended my days in the arena, and there's not one girl in the ranks who could draw the kind of um, purses I did in, uh, did in my day. Let's see. I even had the papers drawn up so that if I died, the Ludus would be pe would uh, pass unencumbered to um, Valatrist so that she continued my legacy and keep the Gladtrices safe and free. I love what Kai... Okay. I, like, they did the oath and everything, and I love what Kai said. Because I was just... I love Kai. Um, he said, in fact, the way you said it... It was the truest I ever heard those words ring. And I realized that I um, don't want to see you burned or bound or beaten or killed by uh, the sword. My father is one of the wealthiest men in Rome. I can go to Caesar. He owes me at least a favor for my years of service to him. And I can buy your contract. Oslo! Oh my god! Kai! Do it! Do it! Do it! I wanted him to do it so bad! And, um... Freaking Fallon's honor, like, ca like cause said that she couldn't do it. Um, and I was like thinking, what the hell? You already got Ma'el killed because of it. And, Ma'el, and like, if it wasn't for your honor, you could have said to Papa, look, I want Ma'el to be my uh, fiance. I don't want to marry Aiden. But freaking Aiden pissed me off. Oh, my God. Um, and here's what Sorcha said. Uh, and, oh, hold on. Oh, so... Um, this was, ha this happened after, um, Fallon, like, destroyed, uh, Kai in the, in, in the ring, and he, uh, with the wooden sword, and, uh, broke his ribs. So they're in the room, in the, his hospital room when he says this. And I, oh my god, that kiss between Kai and Fallon, though. Oh my god, I was squealing with, del with joy. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, it's happening, it's happening. Um. And then we get to, um, what Sort just said. Uh, we made a deal, Fallon. My life for Viricos, my servitude for his freedom. So this is how, uh, basically Sorcha ended up here in Rome. Um, my servitude for his freedom. Virico would live and free, and, and live free. And you would grow up with our father there for you. Um, uh, you see what, ca uh, and she nodded down, because we went to, uh, uh, are you, um, uh, Vargas? And that's the person that um, Fallon looked up to and uh, looked up to when she was younger. Um, you see what, it kept, what captivity does to the soul of a man like that. I couldn't let that happen to father, so I made a deal with the demon. And I'd do it again. Oh my god! This part was so amazing. I was, like, shocked. Charon was... Okay, so... Um, before I get to this part, I know I s skipped some of the stuff that, like, that was going on. And, yeah, um, like, uh, the crow that 
was cut off and shit and that and the uh the feathers and oh my god that that was just messed up in its own right oh my god but anyway this is what Sharon said uh, about Sorcha. My love for Sorcha is an old scarred over wound on my heart that ached old by the passage of time. Finding you ripped that wound open again. I knew there was something about you from the first moment. Then I found your sword and seeing Sorcha's mark on the blade confirmed it. But then it was too late to let you go. So I decided that the best thing I could do was bring you here to her. I was like, Charon! Like, it made me love Charon even more. Um... And, uh, wait, what was it? Um, oh, she was asking about, like, uh, about, more about Sorcha and their relationship. And he said, no, and that's why I love her. But you misunderstand me, Fallon. I could never own Sorcha. The moment her contract was in my hands, I would have torn it into pieces. And then he goes on to say that, um, that Kai would do the same thing. Because when Kai said that um, originally um, about, you know, buying her contract, what she was thinking, what Fallon was thinking, was that he was just going to have her as a, you know, as a slave still. But, but when Sharon said that, I was just like, good Sharon. And I was like, okay, Kai, I love Kai. It's just it's awesome. And then finally, like, so throughout this whole thing, Fallon is still wearing her neck collar. And finally, like, after the conversation with Charon, when she took off, you know, finally got the neck collar off, it was like a symbol of freedom for her. And she did, because she didn't feel like a slave anymore. And, um, because of Kai, because she found about the stuff with Kai. And what she said, she gave it to Kai, and she said this, but don't you see? That's not real freedom, not for a canty warrior. There will come a day, uh, uh, Caius Pharaoh, I promise you, uh, when I will be able to buy my own contract, on that day, if you'll wait for me, I'll come to you, and we can be together as equals, I was like, oh, and then, uh, Kai said, I'll wait for you forever, and that's when I lost it, I was crying when I read that part, I was like, Kai, Kai, um, Oh my god, now we're gonna get to the stuff that really pissed me off about uh, Nyx. Nyx is such a lying bitch. I can't stand her. So Nyx drugged, um, with Mandrake and the wine, she drugged uh, Elka and um, and Fallon. And they went to uh, this, place, uh, this place, and it was just really messed up. Um, and then, guess who we see there? We see Aiden. And I'm just like... What? What the hell is he doing here? It's like, what the fuck? I felt like I was getting mind fucked. It was just so weird. And then Nyx, we find out that Nyx sold her out. Oh, and before that, Aiden fought Ajax. And that fight was just brutal. But anyway, um, I was so pissed when Nyx sold her out. I was just like, oh my god, Nyx, why? Why did you do this? Um... Oh, this is where I almost puked. Now we're at the section where I almost puked. Which was, and I actually, um, I was talking to Geekdom101 on Twitter about this, and I sent him the, the, this quote, and he said, that's disgusting, but that's pretty cool. Uh, which was this. Um, Through the gaps of their huddled forms, I could see that they had split Ajax's torso open, like the roasting carcass of a wild boar. I glimpsed the white gleam of his rib cage, grasping like the rigid uh, fingers at the shadow, and I could hear her wet, gluttonous sound of feasting. Morgoth, protect me. They're eating his heart. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna puke. I, I, I still feel, like, just reading that, I still feel nauseous. Oh, it's making me nauseous. But, like, I would say this is probably just as bad or, or just as disturbing or even more disturbing than uh, Loki's situation, which... If you, uh, I'm telling you, Marvel lied to you. Um, <laughs> what uh, they did, what his punishment was, is they tied his son, um, both, they killed both of his sons, this is the Norse gods. They killed both of his sons. And um, you know how he's like, uh, he's chained in hell? Guess who, I guess how he's chained? By his son's entrails. And I was just like, oh my God, that's so gross. Oh my God. But anyway. <laughs> um... Oh, here we go. Um, 
this... Okay, so this is a little bit more about what the fuck is going on. These are his rebels, not every gladiator in his collection. Oh, yeah. This is about the collector. The collector is just so fucked up. Um, uh, not every gladiator in his collection destined for the um, arena uh, is destined for the arena sands. Some of them wind up here instead, fighting in uh, Munera private bouts for men who call themselves the son of Dees. They think that they draw magical power from the death of strong fighters. I was like, does that mean eating their heart? Like, what else do they eat from them? I was just so grossed out when I saw this. And you know what it made me, uh, I just realized this, you know, in, uh, in Tanzania in particular, that um, they believe that if uh, you ground the bones of um, albinos, that it brings you good luck and shit. And I'm just like, that's what this reminds me of. And it's, oh my God, just, uh, just thinking, just reading this is just making me sick. Ugh. And we found out, uh, so now we're finding out about Aiden's, uh, how the fuck Aiden got here. I'm an exile Fallon, again, because of what I, uh, what I did to Malgwin. The tri, um, Trino, uh, Vanti decreed me a kin killer and banished me from the tribe. You had this coming. And karma is a bitch. It really is. When my uncle and I were forced to flee to Rome, it was Pontius Aquila who offered um, to take us in. And when I found out, um, or not sorry, and when I found myself once more in exile in Rome, I wound up fighting for him as a gladiator in order to pay off all the debts my uncle had incurred. Oh, what this is making me think of is in um, Fukumeki Noise, aka the anonymous noise, is uh, uh, Momo, what happened to him, and uh, he started writing songs to pay off his mother's debt because she kept, you know, incurring debt. So that's what that reminds me of. Um, what's this? My, oh, uh, this was just insane. My head spun the notion. I remembered what they um, because this is how Aiden found out that, you know, Fallon was here. Um, my head spun the notion. I remember what, uh, Thalitris had said to me about the time Sorcha had drunkenly uh, bragged about the fear fierceness of the women of Canty and how her little sister had been the fiercest of the lot. So much for keeping me a secret, seriously. My own sister had betrayed me without even knowing it, and Aiden had betrayed me too. And, oh my god, when Kai saved, uh, Kai saved her, I was like, thank god, I, uh, Kai, thank you. It was Kai and Cassandra that uh, saved her. Uh, and if you guys don't remember, I should have mentioned it sooner. Cassandra was the girl that um, gave uh, Fallon her shoes. Um, where is it? Oh my god. Okay, first of all, Fallon is being hunted by the Collector now. and uh, But the ones like Aquila, who s see themselves as master of the arena, they will ultimately seek to devour you. I was just like, when I read this, I was like, oh my god, this is fucked up and then we get back to um back home and we found out this was so messed up i was just oh my god we found out that elka had been flogged not like not like it 50 shades of gray where it was kind of hot no no she was abused by the flog um uh, Caius had distracted uh chronos at the gate well, I slipped into the townhouse uh, courtyard. Once inside, I made my room, um, w my way up to the room I shared with Elka, passing through quarters uh, that were deserted and silent. Um, I found Elka lying face down her on her cot. Oh God, I'm getting nauseous as, as I'm reading this. As I'm, as I'm thinking about this next part. The skin, the bare skin of her shoulders and back crisscrossed with lash marks still seeping blood. Johnny was with her, carefully applying salve to the wounds. I was just like, oh my god, I really hate you, Nyx. This is all Nyx's fault. Um, Akila, she scrubbed a uh, hand over her eyes. Before you came, oh, this is Nyx. This is why Nyx is doing this shit. Well, oh my god. It, it was not just, I was just like, oh my god, really, Nyx? Akila, she scrubbed a hand over her eyes. Before you came, I was her favorite. I've always been her favorite. Because I've always uh, been the best. And this is making me think of what um, was happening in Black Clover not too long ago. Where one of the mages was um, uh, was the captain's uh, favorite until Yuno came along. That's what this reminds me of. Um, let's see. Uh, 
uh, because I've always been the best. Now it doesn't matter how well I fight. Now she barely even looks at me when I'm in the re arena. Because of you, uh, Victrix, the Fury, kill um, the Fury Killer, everyone thinks you're so perfect. At least Pontius Aquila uh, respe respects my skills. And there's something else I totally forgot to mention. Um, when we got to meet Cleopatra, it, Cleopatra was Julius Caesar's mistress. And I love Cleopatra. She is super cool. Um, she was taught. Uh, she first of all, I was just, when I when we first met her, I was just like, hmm, what? I don't know what to think of her because she just enjoyed herself watching the drama uh, between Sorcha and um, and Fallon. But like, I told like when Fallon or not when Sorcha was telling Fallon about you know the situation and she was uh, what she was gonna you know spend with the money originally to free all the girls cleopatra was like i totally respect sorta for what she's doing we women need to have a voice and i was like thinking damn cleopatra like i i like you now <laughs> oh man when kai confessed his love for Fallon, i was crying happy tears i that part was so amazing um oh man so then we get to the final fight here and and this is against nyx and um it really made me think of the fight in the beginning or the training in not fight the training in the beginning with mael um and uh and fallen because they were doing the um hold on a second i gotta Oh, the Mor uh, Morrigan's flight. Um, and it's just, I think it's kind of ironic that, or not kind of uh, ironic. I just really like that uh, Morrigan, uh, the Morrigan's um, flight happened near the end of the book. I thought that was so great. Uh, okay, now I can get back to this. Oh man, first of all, we had to fight Aiden first. And then uh, they, worked, um, they worked together after she de defeated Aiden, she didn't want to kill him. She was like, you know what? I'm going to just use him <laughs> instead. Oh, my God. I know I didn't mention Ju the deal she made with Julius Caesar, um, who ended up being pretty chill. But, yeah, this video is already long enough as it is. So, sorry. <laughs> um, I love what she said here to Julius Caesar though after um oh before uh I gotta mention this the fly of the Maragon I oh my god I love the way it was described um when she was doing it and like the Mar um Morrigan herself I flew I was like oh my god that's awesome um and this is what uh um Fallon said to Julius Caesar I beseech you to let me stay uh Gladiatrix, Gladiatrix, your, glad your Gladiatrix, to fight another day on your behalf and to con continue to earn the love that the good people of Rome have shown me. I would ask instead you grant uh, grant the rudis and the freedom that goes with it to my noble rival, the uh, Gladiatrix, Nyx. Oh my god, Nyx was pissed. I was like, I was like thinking, dude, I'd be happy if I was getting freed. Like, I was like, why? I was like thinking, why are you pissed off? But I think, my guess what would happen to Nyx and why she might be scared is the collector is going to come collect her. <laughs> but anyway, I love this ending. So how this book ended is, but not to, uh, today. I looked at Alka and Johnny and all the rest of the Aquila girls. Today I am victory. Together we threw back our heads and uttered the uh, canty war cry. Today we are valiant. And I see what you, I see what you did. Uh, Leslie, and I finally understood what it meant to be truly free. I was like, I was just, I love this. And and this was, the best thing about this book was, you know, was the progression from, you know, being a, how her character changed from being a slave to being a warrior. And it was just so good. Um, yes, there was disturbing moments. And I'm, I'm really happy that, um, Les uh, Leslie, I am so happy you went all out on this book. Like, 
you did not edit this <laughs> you did not this was like uncensored rome and i really appreciate that because net because i was when i was reading it, i was like thinking damn um here's a Belinda's really toned this down toned it down <laughs> rick Rorden lied to me oh but I loved how it, it, like, I couldn't predict what's happening next. The shocking stuff about Nyx in particular, because Nyx was, you know, oh man, and Nyx got away with the punishment. Or she, um, Nyx only had to do laundry because she was grabbing food from the kitchen. But oh my God, I really love Kai. I love him so much. And what's, what's nice about Kai, or the relationship with Kai and Fallon, is it progressed naturally. And I, oh my God, the other thing I love that he said was saying was was that like he always knew that there was potential in her and, and Fallon, and he was like amused by her and turned to the love. I was just like, oh God! It, but overall, like this book was fantastic. It got me to pull an all nighter, and that's a rare thing to do with books. I really, really love this book. I can't wait to see what Leslie Livingston does next because she already did, she did um, I, uh, Irish Mythology with Faye. Um, that was her, the first series. The second series, she did Norse. And this series, she did uh, Roman. So I'm curious what Leslie's gonna do next. If she's gonna do Greek next, that'd be pretty sweet. I'd love to her to do Egyptian, as, um, even though there was a little bit of, G of Egypt Egyptian in the Starling series. I'd love for her to maybe expand on that a little bit more. Um, another one that I could see her do is Aztec, which would be really sweet. And what's the other one? Like. Something that would be really cool and really uh, uh, um, original, because I have yet to see books like this, is, and it was briefly mentioned in um, The Trials of Apollo, uh, in The Dark Prophecy, that there's Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian religion. I would love to see, um, like, diff the different African uh, um, mythology, like the Zulu, and what was that name? Hold on a second. I got to find that name or it's going to drive me nuts. Um, I think it is here. Where are you? Come on. Uh, Yoruba. That's what it is. Uh, the Yoruba. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see, like, the different... Because in Africa, um, what was really cool before, you know, the, before the caliphates happened, especially in West Africa, is that they each had their own mythology, and it was really interesting to see. Another one that would be really cool, and I just realized this is Native American, uh, a Native American one. That would be pretty sick, too. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you guys think of this book? This book was fantastic. This book was brutal. This book almost made me barf a couple of times. But that shows you, like, how ballsy um, Leslie Livingston is. And I love it so freaking much. Anyway... Um, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerd Against Inc. If you love what I'm doing and want to contribute to my channel expansion, there's a few ways you can do that. You can donate to my uh, PayPal, Patreon, or purchase something off my Amazon wish list. Um, make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, follow my um, uh, Twitch channel and friend me on PlayStation Network. All that's in the description box below. And the next series I am doing, um, and I just... I just started it this morning is the great hunt series by wendy higgins yes i'm catching up on wendy higgins books because she follows me on twitter as well um until next time nerdigans i'll be seeing you later bye